Please welcome Global Head of Hosting at Airbnb, Catherine Powell, in conversation with Skift founder and CEO, Rafit Ali. Your views on fake grass. I don't know if you can I follow am, that. I live in California. I am all for the fake for, grass. For fake I agree grass. 100%. We uh, have fake grass at home. Well, thank you, Catherine, for being here. You, I interviewed you exactly at this exact conference last year in, uh, in New York. A lot has happened in a year, uh, including the fact that you've... Uh, so you are the global head of hosting. You're responsible for all the bile that the hosts put on Airbnb. So... Uh, Thank you for absorbing all the bile that host. I'm, they, I'm kidding. They, I'm kidding. They put lovely things as they well. are emotional and very invested in the brand, yeah. which is obviously an, an incredible uh, thing. So you recently became a host. I did. And you have a, a house in Santa Monica Hills, which too, if anybody of you know what's happening in California, but well, you tell the story. It's um. So I have yes, I live in the Santa Monica Mountains, um, and it's pretty high, about 2,400 feet, as they say in the U.S. Um, as opposed to 2,400. And it is, it's pretty remote. We have a, a guest house, and I have wanted to host for some time, being global head of hosting. I spend all my time with hosts, but I have wanted to host. But I've had a child, a son, living in the guest house, so I just took the decision to boot him out, which people always look kind of alarmed. It's like, he's not 12, he's 27, and he has somewhere else to live. And so we just <laughs> took the decision to boot him out, turn it um, over onto Airbnb. I then made my husband a co-host, and he only discovered, in fact, that I'd put it on Airbnb by being notified by Airbnb that he was a, a co-host. But he's actually really embraced it, and it's, it's incredible. I mean, it's, it's very different listening and supporting hosts, which is what I've done since I've um, joined Airbnb, to actually being one, and, and the empathy of being in their shoes and worrying about reviews and worrying about managing guest expectations. I mean, I spend my time messaging guests saying, you do realize I live really high up. It's a really windy road. There are coyotes. There may be leaves in the pool. Are you sure you want to come? And then I feel kind of <laughs> confident. But it's been great. It's been and really what great. Are, what's your uh, rating? I have two reviews so far, both five star. So, But I feel the pressure to, in fact, <laughs> I traveled and my husband who, as I said, is embracing this, um, had to host the second ones. Because it, it's a guest house, but we want to be there and welcome them and just ensure that they're OK. And it, when I wasn't there, I was texting and saying, did you say goodbye? Did you, have you checked that they're all right? We need to get a five star. I can't, as head of hosting, not have five yeah, stars. Five star. <laughs> that would look really, really awkward. So you, um, speaking of which, you did come from Disney, so you, you, you know the experience economy very, very well. Uh, and, and part of you taking this job, and Brian has been saying on earnings calls now, and he spoke at the Morgan Stanley conference, I think two weeks ago, where I think it's probably he went the most amount of detail I've seen him talk about hosting. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like, and, and I think he said, and you've said, that as much supply you can get, you can build the demand. The demand is there, the job now is supply. So talk about, as a company where, and, and Brian has also talked about moving Airbnb up the funnel into the inspiration world. Mm -hmm. this, is, this was the genesis of the categories yes. and the homepage, et cetera, and more to come. So how do you think about hosting now for Airbnb in an age where you want to be in the inspiration world? Yeah, and it's, it's right. He's done an incredible job. We've done an incredible job bringing more inspiration to the app with, with categories, and we now want to inspire hosts. I mean, our supply is very strong. We finished uh, 22, 2022 with 900,000 more listings than we started. So it is great. And we have a network effect where, we, where supply will grow when we have demand. But we need to, to focus on it. That, that's, that's my role. So we start with everything from just making people aware of it. When Brian talks about it going mainstream or being underground, it's because Airbnb is a noun and a verb, but for travel. And every single person in this room will have heard of it from a travel perspective, but people don't necessarily think about it as hosting. So we want, to, we want to make people aware of that. In fact, we've got a great campaign called Airbnb It, which is all about just how easy it is. Is there a video? Can host, you play I think it? you've got a video. Which Brian, I, can we play the video? I was told to remind you that you have a video to play. If you have a spare room where your mother-in-law stays, but she only stays for the summer, then for the other three seasons, you have an Airbnb. 
Airbnb it and get paid while she's away. So in my case, it was my son who's <laughs> using it occasionally. And so where, where is this campaign running? It's, it's running in all our, all our main markets. I mean, it's, it's running at least in, in six or seven countries. And we've seen, we, we have an Airbnb campaign, which is marketing, which is all about just understanding that if you have a space, you can Airbnb. We do um, comms in press where we highlight stories of hosts and, and the what, what Airbnb, what hosting has done for them in terms of just economic empowerment, especially important at the moment when we have a very uncertain macroeconomic climate. People are turning to hosting. And this, I mean, nearly half of our hosts tell us that they host to stay in their homes, to pay their rent, to pay their mortgage. A third tell us that it's covering the cost of living at the moment, whether it's energy prices or, or inflation. So we want people to understand that. So we have, we have comms as well around it. And then once they're aware of it, it's about, okay, so how do you become a host? And in November last year, we introduced an, um, a, an easier way to onboard, to basically publish your listing called Airbnb Setup, where we've really simplified up. Uh, um, the process. I mean, the vast majority of our host are individual people. We have to make it simple. And what we do with that, which is great, is connect them to mentors. We connect them to our super hosts who talk them through it and help them set, set it up and also give them tips to be successful for their first booking. It's so important for hosts to have a successful first booking. We know that. And three is the magic number. If hosts don't get to three bookings, they are very likely to churn. And if they have a bad first experience, if they don't get a, a five star, yeah. they, will, they will likely churn. So we, we are there. We understand this kind of these, these key milestones in a host life cycle. And we're there to support them. And we use the community. One of the incredible things about Airbnb is the strength of our community. We have clubs. We have community leaders. We have these super host ambassadors to help them through the process. And these are more organic efforts, or you are driving them? So Air, Airbnb setup is something that we drive and we connect. But the clubs is organic. I mean, we will help set up clubs, but the community leaders and the groups that they have and the chat that they have is completely organic. We will make sure that community leaders have the details that they need. And we do, we do launches twice a year now. Right. So um, that so came out of, so explain what happened in COVID. One of the things Brian has done is he's, uh, the, the whole company, you as well, is... Um, he said, uh, I was trying to remember, One divisional from, from cutting divisions to making it functional yes. as a company. To making it functional, being highly focused and having one roadmap that the whole this company, the whole company has is focused on with these two beats, which are these, these launches. And these launches are about introducing innovations like... Their cover. Like, well, like categories for guests, right. like Airbnb setup for hosts, like introducing air cover. So we have, since the pandemic, innovated over 300 upgrades for our guests and our hosts. And we kind of group them and announce them at these, at these launches. And one of the things that I do with, with hosts to make sure that they feel listened to and partnered with is give them these, this, the heads up, basically, of what's coming. So we did yesterday, Brian was talking to our community leaders. We had over 1,000 on a call. And he was taking him, them through what's coming up in our launch in May. And, and so feeling that they're in the tent. But what was what's so kind of satisfying is that the launches that we have coming up for hosts in May all come from host feedback. I mean, we do workshops. You, have a, you also launched an advisory council for hosts. We have a host advisory board with 23 members, super diverse. And they're so committed. And we've got, they have a little badge which they, they wear the whole time. It's, it's, it's very... It's very emotional. They are very emotionally committed. I mean, they are the host advisory board are the best of the best. And they're very diverse, just geographically, culturally, but also the expertise that we bring. So we will have a member of the host advisory board from Australia who is very knowledgeable on sustainability and will help us educate hosts and give them tips on how to, say, how to host sustainably. We, will ha we have a host who is an expert around accessibility that helps us. So it's, they, they, it kind of all cascades down the community, but it's, it's so, very uh, rewarding for them and for us. Uh, I'm sure you've so far f figured out the interview is going to focus very much on the hosting part because that's what uh, Catherine is responsible for. So I have tons of, qu tons of questions, less about the other side, which is the, uh, the consumer side. So on the, a lot of these efforts are, the, the, what you just talked about, are for individual hosts. Mm -hmm versus the vacation rental managers where you could argue that's where you, you get a lot of heat, which is these people with multiple listings, sometimes hundreds of listings, sometimes thousands of listings, 
large vacation rental managers. So how are you working with them and how is it different from the individual hosts that are there? So our platform started with individual hosts is designed for individual hosts and the tools that we create, the policies is around individual hosts. But we do have property managers. Many of them are small entrepreneurs managing on behalf of people who, who don't or can't host. And we need to help make it easy for them to host and to meet our expectations, our standards of quality in particular. I mean, we don't want speculators, we don't want anyone who is not complying on the platform, but the property managers that we do have, and we have certain markets where that is the normal practice. Right. It's not normal Board, for people to open their yeah. homes, we have professionals, but we want them to create the same quality and feeling of being hosted, even if they're not there. And so we, we do workshops with them, and in fact we have members of um, from property managers on the host advisory board because they want to. They are very keen to understand how to represent the Airbnb brand in the way that our core hosts do. The, uh, if you are on Twitter, uh, which I am a lot, uh, for those of you who know, um, there's no good that comes out of that. But um, And if Brian is on Twitter. And Brian is on Twitter too. He, he, he uh, has taken it, uh, he's been for the last few years, has done a great job. Um, every time Airbnb trends, I'm sure you, like, a, a something probably drops in your throat. It's like, oh, my God, Airbnb is trending again, which happens multiple times a day. Yeah. If you click on it, uh, guess what? It's, it's either the hosts complaining or it's about the fees, the, the, the extra fees, that, uh, the cleaning fees, yeah. or some horror story, whatever. So as an as a, as a, as a observer, media observer. As a Twitter as a Twitter person, Twitter person, you hear that noise yes. versus what the reality. So how do you take, do you care about the Twitter feedback? Yes, we care about it. It's, it, it's an important forum. And, and if it was, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right that sometimes there will be something that is sensationalized. If you are a noun and a verb and, and part of pop culture, people love to just put Airbnb in and you'll get the, you'll get the, the tweet, the, the reaction. Or the, or yeah. the reaction. But no, I mean, we listen to feedback. We listen to feedback from hosts and we listen to feedback from guests. And when you see something trending, like cleaning fees or this idea that, you know, I, I think that I'm gonna pay $100 a night and when I check out for two nights, it's suddenly $600. That's, you know, we see that that is a problem. So, it, for example, for that, we've introduced um, an all-inclusive price. It doesn't include tax yet. We might do that. But so that, that, that guests can understand exactly what this trip is going to cost because it's incredibly frustrating when you find all these fees that you're not expecting afterwards. And our hosts as well. I mean, our hosts want to price competitively. And at, at the moment where affordability is so important, guests are more price sensitive, which is why they want to know, hey, if I'm booking for three days, I really want to know what my budget is. Hosts want to price competitively. So we're doing all-inclusive pricing for guests, which they've responded really well to, right. and our hosts embraced as well. And we're helping our hosts understand how to set the price that the guest will pay. What we've heard from hosts is they say, well, they set what they want, and they don't realize necessarily what the guest is going to end up paying, and now we have a tool where they can really manage that, and I think that's going to help them be more competitive as well. And uh, one of the things you're, you're also doing on the host side is, I uh, read the case study with, uh, on the tourism side with uh, Visit North Carolina, where you're trying to push, um, well, talk about that experiment, which is trying to push people to rural North Carolina and to do host initiation Ac workshops. Academies, yes. Yeah. Yep. So part of our, part of our, our mission is, is to basically promote what we call sustainable tourism. And sustainable tourism- It's also a little bit like you, you, you are gonna, if the supply is, not, is, there's not enough supply in the cities, yes. might as well push well, this is This is what it is. It's about tourism where tourism is, is needed, where, where those dollars are needed. And we work with over 150, I think, destination marketing organizations, North Carolina is one, who will come to us and say, especially post-pandemic, mm -hmm. they will come to us and say, we need visitors, we need your guests, we have so much traffic, we need your guests. And what, you, what we can do, we can do it through categories, and we can just do it through being a tech company. In travel is literally, and you hear Brian talk about this, point demand to where we have supply or where supply is needed. Right. So someone like, right, like North Carolina, we will do two things. One is we will create a kind of destination page so people are aware of it and want and to this travel. This is not paid placement. These are just uh, no. pure partnerships. Pure, pure partnership, no, no financial exchange. And we, will, and we will recruit hosts because they need supply. And what we will do in some of these areas which are, could be underserved, 
um, or underrepresented communities, we will set up an Airbnb Academy to help train people to be a host. And that could be anything from financial literacy, digital literacy, to how to be hospitable, how to make your host or your, your, your home or your room nice. And we do this all over the world. Right. So uh, actually, let me do a follow-up question. So in cultures which are not prone to being hospitable, that's not the right word, which are not prone to uh, sharing the home to welcome strangers into the homes, yeah. for instance, or, 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 or these guests. Japan is a great example of, of the, the, the whole campaign over years that you had to do. Saudi, I guess, is a, is a case study to come because they just legalized people being able to uh, put up their homes. Uh, how do you think about that? So, I mean, you use Japan as a, as a great example. Hospitality is core to the Japanese culture. It is in so many, I, we study it. I study the art of hosting to try to deconstruct it and help educate our hosts or provide tools for them to host in, in a hospitable way. Anyone who knows anything about omotenashi, the tea ceremony, the hospitality, it's, it's core to the Japanese culture. So we know that and we know also that Japan has, it has many, many empty vacant homes and it has cities that have basically been vacated by or empty as young move, they move out. Yeah, Japan is going through a population crisis. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It, and, and it's terrible, and they move to the main cities and they don't come back, and you have these empty towns. So actually, with Japan, it's a kind of, it's a gentle approach where we are working, and again, we're approached by um, local councils. We have one in the, I think it's the Nagano district, where we are helping them renovate houses, old Japanese houses, mm. so that they can encourage Japanese to come from the cities to stay, so we've created hosts, we've helped them renovate their homes, and they have a lovely term in Japan, which I'm probably gonna misrepresent, called kankai jinko, I think, is, which is this idea of someone, and it's so aligned with our mission, someone visiting somewhere where they want to stay and belong, feel like they are, it's very so much they're, a they're not a Airbnb resident, but word. yes, it's totally like Airbnb. Yeah. So we do that in Japan, and I think, for, for Japan, we have these examples, and then you have, going back to what we were first talking about, just awareness. Awareness of Airbnb is very low in Japan, and so we want to build awareness, but do it in a way that has credibility and where they can see the value, and this partnership is a really good example of being able to see the uh, value of hosting. China, you're totally out, right? China, we don't have a hosting business, but we have outbound, so right. guests uh, who, course, yeah. who travel, and we're excited about China opening up and starting to travel. Haven't yet again. seen the... Uh, the flow come out yet? Not, not yet. It's starting, but I think for everybody, it's it's slow. Uh, so, so Brian at the Morgan Stanley conference caused a little bit of stir, which I'm sure you are you're you're still dealing with, uh, which is that uh, paid listings. I'm, I'm going to just echo what he said, which is, it, and we we he, we are asked. He is asked at every earnings call, and it's it is interesting, and it's something that's studied, but it's not something that we're about to we're about to do. How would hosts react? I mean, I think some hosts would love it and, and some would find it, you know, very unfair. And it's, you know, our ranking, um, so the, the discovery, what we're more focused on than paid listings is, is, is two things. One is just how do we make sure that we rank quality and value? And, and part of that is obviously pricing, but it's also about how do you really emphasize what a host has, the amenities that a host has, which a guest might need. And digital nomads or long-term stays is a good example of that. We know, we have all the data of what they're looking for if they're going to stay somewhere for a longer period. So they want great Wi-Fi. They want somewhere to work that's comfortable, not a dining room table. Right. They want separate washrooms and, and, and maybe pets. So we work with hosts to make sure that they, they you know, have those amenities and they highlight those amenities. And we then want to match guests who are looking for it. I know you talked about AI, I think, probably yeah. throughout the day. Okay. For, for us, what's really exciting is that we will be able to match even better. That you understand what a guest really needs, what they're looking for, what their interests are, they're traveling with their family, their pets, their, what, they, what the reasons that they're going, and then match that with hosts, and also what hosts are looking for. Right. So uh, in terms of you use the word AI, obviously, so let's get into a, a little bit of that. Um, you are in, uh, Brian has teased on Twitter that there's a new homepage coming for um, Airbnb. So please unveil what that's going to be here. <laughs> there's, there's not about to be a new homepage. Um, I think, no, we've just, like, we've just Lots resorted it. Yeah, yeah, we just kind of turned it on its head. And I mean, hosts would kill us if we changed it again. again they, yeah. um, they that was a huge change for the yeah, hosts. Yeah, a huge change for them. What was the reaction, so what was the education process for the host 
to go to these categories because there was some grumbling that now our listings are buried under these, these categories. I think, I mean, I think one of it was change. And I have to say, candidly, one of my lessons was we did not bring them along. I mean, literally, they opened up their app and it was like, what's happened to Airbnb? And this is why now we do these, we've, we've really changed and we, we will do these previews with them and we will make sure before that, you know, you before the launch. The and we've created a beta program that, to make sure that they can, they can actually try the products and see it. That was really important to us. So part of it was, was change. Um, and then we, we, we you know, we've, we've learned, they wanted to know what categories they're in and we hadn't made it clear what categories they're in. So we now tell them what categories they're in. Um, and also we educate them in, in terms of the things that we need to do when we talk about AI and machine learning. This is how we match a listing to a, to a category. To so we need data from them and we need photographs and we need them to give us that structured data. So we, we're doing a lot of, of education and awareness as to what categories mean because it, for hosts who are off the beaten track, for hosts who are not in the top destinations, it's been really powerful. Categories, right. and people discover places that they weren't thinking of. When you, were, when you think of the kind of regular search paradigm, you put in what you know. In categories, you talk about inspiration. I mean, people browse, and it's right, been, that was the big they've been viewed over 500 million times. And um, the, one of the things that, so you are at a 3% take rate. For those of you who don't know, this is obviously public knowledge because you've talked about Three. it on the 3% take rate, which is, uh, explain what it is. Take so away. that's the that's the fee that Airbnb will take well, from hosts from the hosts, and then they take about ten to fourteen percent from the from the guests as well. So that hasn't changed. One of the things that you as a company has said is the way we deepen our moat is to give away as much free yes. services to the hosts and obviously our, yep. the guests as well, as well. Air cover was part of that. Um, can you offer paid services to the hosts? I think we can absolutely offer services to, to hosts at, at some point. And we're, we, I know Brian mentioned that in the, in the Morgan Stanley may have on the earnings, but it's something that we look at because hosts ask us uh, for advice or for help. Like or a marketplace for, yeah, to choose. And so you can imagine they all want to, cleaners are really important, especially post-pandemic to find co-hosts. Incredibly, incredibly important for a lot of people. You know, hosting, and I, and I know this, hosting is, well, my husband knows it more than I do now. It's hard work. It's, I mean, you, you know, you want to prepare it. You want to be thoughtful. You need to respond to them. So we have over, over half a million co-hosts on the platform. A lot of them are a, a partner or even a, a cleaner, a, you know, a, or a local, a friend, a neighbor. But we hear from hosts who say, I would love to host, especially occasional hosts. Right. So I want to, we see this more and more. I want to go away on holiday. I'm going to put my house on Airbnb, but I can't do the co-hosting because I'm on holiday. Um, and so you could imagine a marketplace where they can find co-hosts and, and other services. They may want to rent things for, for guests. So yes, I, I can imagine that. Okay. So we do have time for questions. I know a bunch of them are, are, are coming up. If you uh, want to ask questions, please uh, go ahead. Uh, this is, uh, you mentioned in passing that Airbnb might include taxes and the all in pricing. What is driving so that? In, in in many markets, what we call the regulated markets for pricing, Europe, Australia, it's all included. It's just not standard in the US. Right. You know, anyone who shops and you think you're paying for one price and then the tax gets added, which is incredibly, I'm still not used to it. And it, it's more about, it's just not standard yet, but so that's why, but we will move to that, I'm we'll sure. to that, okay. Um, how can Airbnb ensure the same standards of cleanliness provided by major hotel chains? Have you seen the major hotel chains these days? Um, but we'll, uh... So um, on, on cleanliness, it is incredibly important as a standard. Our hosts are reviewed on it. Our super hosts cannot be super hosts if they, if they don't reach certain standards. We take action on reviews. We get the data on a, on a review on cleanliness. Well, cleanliness and accuracy are incredibly important. And we will take action if, if they're not clean. And we will, this will it, the action can range anything from just educating a host saying, hey, you've been kind of, comments have been made about cleanliness, you may want to think about it, here's some advice. Or we will suspend a listing that gets consistent um, bad reviews around cleanliness. Have you solved the party problem? The, 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 um... well, we, have, we have a ban on parties. We have a ban on parties. We have reservation technology, I mean incredible technology that can detect what we call risky reservations. 
And we will, if we detect this, so it's a, a series of, of um, factors that will be taken into, into consideration. Someone, maybe someone who is, is young, who doesn't have, maybe, you know, 1920, doesn't have a review, books an entire home for one night. You know, flags are gonna, gonna go up. We will stop those reservations. In fact, in the UK, last year, we stopped 84,000 individuals from booking what looked like a risky reservation. Mm. And we have a neighborhood hotline for neighbors to call if they're concerned. This is Airbnb hotline. Air, yeah, yeah. So we are, we're very focused on making sure that we don't have parties. It happens, and if it happens, we will take action immediately. Okay. Um, the, on the sus, uh, sustainability side, uh, you've started doing energy audits to help hosts improve usage and even covering the portion of the costs for the hosts. So this is very interesting. Is there more to come on that? So yes, there, there will be more to come. So we, we obviously, we are a platform with 6.6 .6 million listings. And so the impact that we can have on any of these areas like sustainability, like accessibility and having more accessible homes, we, we can, it can have a real, a real impact that is really important for our hosts and for our guests. So we have corporate commitments around sustainability. What, what I focus on for hosts is one, educating them just on sustainable practice. And we have a lot of hosts within the community who want to share all their tips. But what we've, we've done a couple of pilots in Europe, in the UK and in France, where we've partnered to help provide hosts, first of all, with an audit on how to make their home more energy efficient. I mean, they don't know where to begin, a lot of them. And then when they've done the audit, then we have partners who help them create the, the renovations in, in whatever it is, whether it's a new boiler or it's insulation, whether it's new windows or LED lights. And we've seen an incredible um, pick up on that. So we need to see, obviously, it's not scalable for us to do that for 6.6 .6 million listings, right. but the response from hosts has been incredibly strong, and we have partners wanting to work with us. So I guess a lot of the startups in the space you want to work with that help provide services potentially yes. to these types of, uh, to, yeah. to, to your hosts. And I mean, going back earlier to your point of other paid services, hosts want to know where they can access these things. These so you could imagine, services. again, creating a marketplace where they can find these matching services yeah. uh, for them. Around uh, hosting sustainably. Um, what are the markets that Airbnb wishes had more listings or where supply does not meet demand? So we, we have, you know, 6.6 .6 million listing in 220 countries. We, we basically, the way I would answer that question is to say what we want to do is be able to send demand to where we have supply and where supply is needed. And that really is, that, that goes back to this idea. The World Cup was an idea, uh, was, a, was, a, was an example. Yes, North Carolina. And, and also, I mean, another good example is events. Right. We know, I mean, in the, in the UK, we worked, for example, with the Commonwealth Games and are working with Liverpool for the Eurovision Song Contest, which the UK is hosting um, for Ukraine. Um, and they, they need supply. So we're going to help them build supply for that, for that event, which is a sustainable way of providing accommodation. And what we find that is great for us is that often hosts, including Brian and his co-founder, hosted for an event. He hosted for the San That's Francisco Design. Start. And then they love it, and they, or they love the income, and they stay. How's his hosting going? His, his, hosting, is, his hosting is going very well. He, he recently had a, uh, one of our community leaders from South America who, and it's, it's absolutely legitimate, they, they will, you know, sign up, um, it's not, it's definitely not fixed. He wouldn't have fixed this one because I think he was given a lot of feedback um, that then he brought to our... Uh, feedback. Feedback from the host, which he then brought to the Monday morning meeting, which was like pages of feedback. So, no, he's loving it. He's loving it. Um, you are, as a company, uh, probably the largest company of an example that's gone totally remote. We've gone full choice. So what we have is a policy called live and work anywhere, where you can choose to live and work anywhere. For many people, it is going to the office in San Francisco. So our offices, I was in the London office on Monday, our offices are open. We don't have as many as we had before, but the offices are there because for many people, they need to go to an office or they want to go to an office. We also want an office because we want to bring people together intentionally at certain times so we can continue to have either the, the type of brainstorming, creative or strategic that you, you can do better in person or just to make sure that you continue building the culture. So we, we have a lot of people who have, a lot of our employees who have chosen 
to live anywhere. I have members of my team who live in Buenos Aires and Mexico and, and love it, but we have many as well who, who live locally, work from home, but will still come in to, to meet with teams. Um, we're almost there, but let's uh, get a few questions. Uh, sorry. Uh, Airbnb is not an OTA. No. Uh, what are your thoughts on the large OTAs and their move to offer vacation rentals and homes? I think you know, that's, that's been the case for some time, and I think we, you know, we know that that's there. We focus on, on what is so unique about Airbnb, which is, I mean, especially if you think at the moment with the, the macroeconomic backdrop, Airbnb is so unique that we have everything for every budget. So we have private rooms, which are incredibly important for a budget traveler. Brian's space is a, is a private room, all the way up to, to luxury. But we have entire homes, something which obviously was very, very popular during the pandemic. And, and what we're seeing now is, is a growth in group travel. So it's very affordable for group travel and family travel, right. which has continued since the pandemic. And this, this, I think, really represents the ongoing trend of flexibility. Our family travel globally has increased 60% mm -hmm. pre-pandemic. And I think this is because people remain flexible. You may not be able to fully work remotely, but you're able to do some work remotely. So people are doing everything from go away for the weekend with the family and then just if it's a half term or something, add on additional days or spend the whole of the summer holidays traveling somewhere, living somewhere remotely and being able to work. I mean, one in five of our nights booked is still, is still long, a long-term stay, long over term 28 stay. days. Yeah, that, that has, been, that has uh, come down from the peak, but it's still now much yeah. larger and than nearly, it was. Nearly half, about 45, 46% are for stays of over a week. That's pretty good. Uh, last thing, um, uh, should, this is the hotel industry, should hotels be talking to you in terms of inventory? Yeah, we talk. We talk to hotels. We have hotels. We have. We obviously we own hotels hotel tonight, tonight. Um, and we have a wonderful boutique hotels on the platform. So no, there is a there is absolutely a space for hotels on our platform in our network. It's really important if they are on Airbnb as opposed to Hotel Tonight that they they complement the brand that they offer that that unique hospitality that that is so important to Airbnb's brand. But no, but there is there's room for hotels. Okay, so these are. There, there's a, actually a B&B category. We have, we have boutique hotels, but we have a B&B category, and yes. these are the traditional B&Bs before Airbnb became a yeah, term. Yes. But yeah, okay. All right, thank you. We're out of time. Thank you, Catherine. That was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.